What's up, everybody? If you want to join the greatest online Star Wars community, the Fandom Menace, make sure you hit that subscribe button before today's video starts so you don't miss out on any updates and you're always the first to know when our newest videos go live. The following is a World Class Bullshit is exclusive. It's been a hot minute since anyone's used that phrase. The internet is a weird place. It doesn't actually exist. It's a digital landscape where people can come together and come together. It's also a place where people can exchange ideas, discuss movies, and if you're really good at it, turn it into a business. Meet Collider. Collider focuses on entertainment, news, analysis, commentary, along with original features. The website primarily covers film, television news, and commentary film and television reviews and editorials. As of June 2019, Collider's YouTube channel has 567,000 subscribers and over 466 million cumulative views. Extensions of the channel include Movie Talk, Movie Trivia, Schmodown Heroes, Jedi Council, Behind the Scenes and Bloopers, and Collider News. Thanks, Wikipedia. If you've been listening to our channel for any period of time, you'll no doubt have heard us mention Collider at some point, be it through referencing them in a video or talking about their special cousin, John Campia. We've made a video on John and referenced him numerous times, but today's video isn't about John and his numerous foot and mouth moments. Today we're talking about another member of Collider, Christian with a K, Harloff. Christian is like most people at Collider, sort of a dick. I always lumped Harloff in with guys like Campy and the others in the cast of forgettable faces at Collider. They're somewhat knowledgeable people who say very safe things when discussing entertainment. They're a bit standoffish with fans and they tend to toe the company line. Their reward is access to all sorts of events that help them grow their brand. They're basically one big commercial wrapped in the guise of being a fan. They've been called a lot of things, but Shill seems to be the title that has caught on the most, and with Christian, angers him. In the post-Last Jedi world, where everyone who wants insider access has to bend the knee to Disney, people like the Collider crew have become the poster children for the access media, or good old-fashioned shills for the layperson. It's worked for quite a while, but in the last few days, their shilly ways have blown up in their faces, exposing the cost of selling your dignity to Disney. On a recent episode of Collider Live, the house of cards that is the Collider brand began to fall apart in front of the fans' eyes. Before we cover that, I want to give a shout out to two YouTubers for alerting me to this story. First off, Drunk3PO, the man who produced an excellent video covering this meltdown, who I'm borrowing the Collider footage from. And Black Angus Reviews, the man who pointed me to 3PO's video. Both are excellent YouTubers who I personally subscribe to, and I recommend you all do the same. Now back to the topic at hand, Christian Harloff's outburst on Collider Live. Christian was upset, or in his own words, butthurt over the fact that Disney didn't let him into the new Star Wars Galaxy's Edge theme park for free after years of busting his ass to be a Star Wars fan. I don't think that's how being a fan works, but more on that later. You know what? Let me just show you the clip of his outbursts and we'll talk about it in greater detail. I'm going to address this once and then be done with it. So I'm uh, Frosty, Heidi, and Frank this morning. Uh -huh. And we, we laughed because they said uh, they brought they're giving away tickets to Disneyland and Galaxy's Edge. And mm -hmm. today I walked in and Roka's like, oh, here we're going to talk about Jedi Council. Was like, would you want to leave with this or Galaxy's Edge? I go, we're not talking about Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. Not talking about it. I go, you know what I'm going to talk about Galaxy's Edge? In two years when I go. Yeah. Because am I a little butthurt? No, I'm a lot butthurt. I think that we, Jedi Council, has been one of the leading Star Wars voices for the last five years. Jedi Council was not invited at all. So reached out, said, hey, we, we really would like to promote it, we'd like to talk about it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go as a fan, and I'm going to enjoy it, and I want to go, but I'm not going to promote it anymore. I'm you... not going to talk about it. I'm thinking more business sense than anything else, too. If you know that there's all these okay. shows out there, and like the sites are out there, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you invite You're not Jedi thinking Council? in business sense, though. I am, though. Be... Yeah. Because there's another reason. I don't want to report on other people's reports. I don't want to say like, well, Jermaine Lucier, who goes to fucking everything, he get he 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 reported on this, so but I'm gonna you, go off his report. If no, you had no been thanks. invited and you guess what? I'm not. I've been busting my fucking ass being a Star Wars fan for five fucking years. I feel on the, the show. same way about. I I've, I've been called shill. I get I get screamed at. You know. So let this one. Let, let me be a fucking shill for this one. Let me go and experience this fucking thing. And maybe I don't even like it, but I wanted to go. Ooh, maybe some of Luke Skywalker's green milk can alleviate those burns. Part of me wants to feel bad for Harloff because of what happened to him. I don't feel bad that he doesn't get to go to the park. I feel bad that after all of his hard work, he was brushed aside by the very company that he lives for, like a scorned lover. I take umbrage with his comments about busting his ass for five years to be a Star Wars fan. That's not what being a fan means, or is. He spent the last five years building a relationship with the company who owns Star Wars for perks and exclusive access. It's his job. Harloff and Collider are in the business of promoting Hollywood. They do it under the guise of being a fan. They dress like fans, they act like fans, but at the end of the day, they're an undercover commercial. 
Sort of like that little orphan Annie decoder ring, but instead of telling you to drink your Ovaltine, Collider tells you to obey Disney. After Harloff's little outburst, the producer of the segment cuts into the feed, and this is where the story gets interesting. Part of doing your job and is talk about it. About yeah, but it, I, yeah. I, and I'm going to be stubborn and say I don't want to. Okay. <laughs> um, I, and I You're don't. going to though. What's that? You're going to. I don't want to. Uh, no, because it's our coverage. Uh, Haley's got a lot of really good interviews with Imagineers. Uh, that she's going to be posting so. First on. of all, first of all, I don't want you to do that on the air. You can call me in afterwards. No, no, so no, you no. know what? So then someone else hosts the show today. Someone else hosts the show today. You you don't have. It's the second time you've done this. The first time you've done this, you burst in the door. You burst in the door and screamed at us because we played the YouTube video no, and we no, didn't no, no, know no. it. I, I, that was I, the first time. I went in. I went in and let you know that you have been taken off the air already. I know, but you screamed at us. For I didn't it. scream. You, I just, you I didn't. Roxy, did he yell at us? I said, hey, you've been, you were off the air. Roxy, did he yell at us? Uh, There's a clip. I, it's, it's pretty... You, you, it's yeah, sad. yeah the, an, the answer is yes. You yeah, yelled at yes. us, and you embarrassed us in front of Kate Mulligan, who was sitting here, too. If you want to do this on the air, I'll do it on the air. I would much no, no, rather no, you... You, did, you, you, you started this on the air. You brought... You 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 started the show by saying you're not going to talk about it on Jedi Council, which I, is your show. Okay, but you're not the producer of it, and I it was, am actually. I am actually. You're actually I, I, not. I, yes, I am. I'm actually. That was the deal I made with Fernandez. No, I'm also actually, uh, no, just the same way producer. you didn't know. The same way you did. The same way you didn't know that I was the fucking head of development at one point, a head of content. Where you're like, oh, I think you're just head of development. I walk into to Fernandez. I go, can you clear it up? Content and development, to which now is not the case. You are, and I get it. But I, first of all, if you want to exactly. do this on the air, we do it on the air. Yeah. But I am not. But I am absolutely not talking about it today. You can have Roca host it. How about that? I mean, if you don't want to host the show, because I don't want to. You, oh, I'm so sorry. You didn't get to go. It's sad to see just how disposable these people are to these companies. That slimy producer showed us his true colors, and I expect that's how most of these big collider-like channels operate. Part of me wants to sympathize with Harloff, and another part wants to laugh at his situation. I'm glad he stood his ground in the moment, but I suspect that many others in his position just roll over. Hell, I suspect he rolls over when the camera's not on. It makes me ask the question, what is the price of shilling? Christian clearly hates being called a shill, but if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, well, you know the rest. Admittedly, I take a little bit of pride in knowing that the word shill bothers Harloff and the others out west because, to me at least, shows that they're aware of just how interchangeable they are. I think the real price of shilling is the realization that the only value you have is to say what someone else tells you to, and at the end of the day, when you're all out of juice, you haven't built anything to keep yourself going. In other words, these people are actors. Their script's purpose is to sell whatever a company wants the fans to buy into. The whole situation was an inside look at the inner workings of corporate channels. It shows the people on camera are talking heads, just like all the cable newscasters. It really eliminates their credibility when we see the man behind the curtain approving what they can and can't say. Remember that next time you watch one of their videos. We've been saying all sorts of things on the Fandom Menace for well over a year, and this Collider controversy makes us feel vindicated. The fact that the three High Council channels combined are getting close to Collider numbers is incredible, and our influence is even greater. The summer of 2019 is feeling a lot like the summer of 2018 in regards to our ability to see through the sham that is Disney Star Wars. Last year, we were the crazy ones. This year, well, it seems we were right all along. Before we go, I wanted to talk about the thing Christian Harloff was denied. There's buzz surrounding the opening of the park, but not as much as I'd have thought. There's a lot of talk about the theme being in the sequel trilogy era, which is sort of a fail on its own. But another thing I keep hearing about is the inflated prices. I found this article and, good lord, $75 for beer? I like to drink, but that's extortion. This information comes from comicbook.com. The cantina at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is selling drinks for $75. The opening of Star Wars Galaxy Edge marks the single biggest park expansion in Disneyland's storied history, allowing fans to immerse themselves in the franchise and take a trip to a galaxy far, far away. But with Disneyland's increasing prices and all the dollars spent on merchandise, it seems to be less affordable for fans trying to vacation on a budget. If that's the case, you might want to step clear of Olga's Cantina, unless you have a surplus of credits burning a hole in your flight suit pocket. The first area to serve alcohol in Disneyland Park is the first official recreation of an actual cantina in the Star Wars galaxy. Olga's Cantina is packed with charm and the aesthetic to make you feel you've actually ventured into Moss Eisley's trendier competitor. There's a lack of alien denizens, a sheen polish, DJ R3X spinning in the corner, and the fact that you'll have to get on a waiting list to enter. All of these aspects make it seem like you're not in a bar in the Star Wars universe, but instead, a fancy nightclub. And then you look at the price of alcoholic drinks, and that fact is only further reinforced. While there are some more affordable options, if you're okay with $12 beer night, there are also some prices that might make visitors gasp. The priciest drinks range from $75 to $32, but they do come with souvenirs that Disney is probably hoping are worth the price of admission. I'm guessing they're not. 
The most expensive option is the Beer Flight, which gives you the option of trying every draft on tap for $75 on a souvenir board. It comes on a hardwood plank with decorative hollowed Rancor teeth, in which the beer samples are actually served. While it's a neat souvenir, the beers included a Sierra Nevada Tropical IPA, a New Belgium Red Ale, and a Blue Point Lager, and a Belfast Point IPA. All good beers, but the price of admission might be a turnoff. The next most expensive option is also alcoholic, but might prove to be more palatable among collectors. The Yub Nub is a spice drink with fruity mixers, and comes in a souvenir mug from Endor. This mug is charged with a lot of the same symbols you'll find among the Ewok Village. But still, $42 is a bit steep for a cup and some overpriced booze. The next most expensive option is a non-alcoholic, appropriately called the Cliff Dweller, which is served in a souvenir pork mug for $32. This is just a fancy ginger ale concoction mixed with citrus, coconut, and a blend of hibiscus-flavored grenadine. All in all, the drinks at Ogus Cantina are pricey, and the souvenirs might not be worth the tag. But if you're headed to the trendiest place in the galaxy, chances are the amount of credits for the swag isn't exactly a setback. But if it is, make sure you're prepared before you get on the waiting list. Um, why are they selling alcohol in Star Wars land? If Star Wars is only for kids? Kind of hypocritical, Disney. At the risk of sounding hyperbolic, these last two weeks have been some of the most important in regards to Disney Star Wars. First, that Vanity Fair article came out, and because of it, we learned why Disney Star Wars is hollow, lifeless, and stupid. Now, thanks to the Harloff event... Harloff event? Sounds like a bad sci-fi film. Better write that down. Now, thanks to this Collider situation... We've had an inside look at these shill organizations. We've learned that the cast is expendable and that the corporate message takes precedence overall. One final thing. I'd like to throw an invite to Christian Harloff to appear on this channel, be it on the High Council or World Class Bullshitters podcast or another time in general. I'd like to talk to this guy. Folks, if you add him, be respectful and honest. Don't harass the guy. But I do have a lot of questions for Special K, Christian Harloff. So that's it for today. Are you surprised with back-to-back -back videos here on World Class Bullshitters? I know I am, because I need sleep. But you know what? You guys are definitely worth it. And as we continue to grow the WCBS brand and get closer and closer to overtaking the shills at Collider, I'll look back on the nights in June where I barely slept and think to myself, yep, it was worth it. And I hope these types of things are worth it for Christian Harloff and the others who work for these bigger companies, these bigger channels, if you will. I'm not really trying to take personal pot shots at him right now. What I am trying to do though is show, expose, and shine light on just how they operate. I know a lot of people identify with the people on camera, but realistically, they're telling you someone else's message. They're just newscasters, and if you trust your local newscasters, cool. But remember, they're being told what to say. There's someone above them. They're not the opinions of these creators, these writers, these failed actors. What they are is the opinions of who hires them, who pays the bills. And the way these places pay the bills, you know, we don't really know besides advertising and their exclusive access to places like Disney World. So it's all interesting to me, but that's not what's important. What's important is how you guys feel about it. So down in the comments below, let me know how you feel about Christian Harloff's little outburst, how you feel about Collider, and how you feel about shills in general. Do you think the tide is turning in terms of shilling? I've seen a lot of other YouTubers that were very anti-fandom menace flip the script. I've seen a couple YouTubers that were always going after me on Twitter flip the script in terms of Star Wars and merchandise and all these other things. So it seems like the tide is turning in the fandom menace's favor because they all see how we're growing. They see the movement. They see what we're about. We're not a cult. We're not dangerous, we're just a group of people, fans if you want to use the phrase, but we're a group of people who care about entertainment, who don't like its bastardization, and we respect each other within the group and we try to build each other up. That's why I was very adamant to make sure that I referenced Drunk 3PO, and why I want to give Black Angus Reviews a shout out for bringing this article to my attention. Because we help our own here, and that's very important, that's the message. I always end these videos with be excellent to each other, and I think you guys pick up on that. There's a lot of things that happen in our personal Facebook groups, our private chats and all this stuff, and it's all good things, things I'm very proud of, happy to say that I'm a part of. So while the fandom menace seems to get attacked all the time in these stupid articles, especially ones about Ron Howard, 
on the inside, the real story is it's a cool place to be. And if you want to get involved with us, well, subscribe to this channel, subscribe to the other channels like Ethan's, Jeremy's, uh, Drunk 3PO, and Black Angus Reviews, among many, many others. And uh, get involved with the Fandom Menace. Go back, watch old content, and um, find out that we weren't full of shit. Well, sort of, but uh, in a good kind of way. If you really, really, really want to get involved with this channel, World Class Bullshitters, we're over on Patreon. A buck a month helps, but $5, which is only 17 cents a day, gets you exclusive access to a lot more, including digital content. And that digital content includes commentaries. Uh, we're in the middle of our James Bond commentaries. Actually, we're near the end. I think we're on Bond number 15. So uh, if you join today, you'll get access to the first 15 James Bond movie commentaries. We got Star Wars movies. We got all kinds of things over there. So uh, if you're looking for a way to consume more world-class bullshitters and help us grow, well, then, you know, join the Patreon page. And if you're really looking to make friends in the fandom menace, the World Class Bullshitters Facebook page, the group, is another great way to do that. So folks, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up on the way out and share it all over social media. And again, um, do I think Christian Harloff will ever appear on the World Class Bullshitters channel? You never know. Stranger things have happened. Other YouTubers who swore up and down they hated us have popped up on this channel. But as I said, if you try to get his attention, be cool about it. I don't all of a sudden feel bad and I'm trying to, you know, draft him to our team. Not at all. I just want to have the story. I want to talk to the guy and uh, hear some of the inside information from his point of view. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear why these people shill the way they do and why the word shill actually sets them off. So Christian, if you hear this, you know how to contact us. We're on Twitter. WorldClassBS at Mail.com. We'll see where it goes. Uh, folks, tonight is the High Council here on World Class Bullshitters, so make sure you have that bell notification turned on. And make sure you go back and check out yesterday's video about Ron Howard. It's doing well, and if you haven't watched it, well, make sure you do. It's worth the time. So, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Check out our old videos while you're at it. And of course, be excellent to each other. Aaron Cleary's Bachelor Pad Economics. From dating to what to major in to purchasing a home to starting a business to children and even wife training. Bachelor Pad Economics is the wisdom you wish the father you never had gave you. This video is also brought to you by Comics Elite. For the elite and exclusive variant covers, taking part in live Facebook auctions, poll lists, and signature opportunities, check out ComicsElite.com. And if you'd like to advertise on this channel and reach millions of eyes a month, email us at worldclassbs at mail.com. Now on to the video. The following is a world-class bullshitters exclusive.